Hey everybody, this is Oliver Joyce from Whiskey Barrel Studios. I'm the creator of Sword and Sandals Immortals. Join me now over the next 30 to 40 minutes as I play through the first few areas of the game. I'll give you a few secrets, tips, techniques, and just share a few behind the scenes stories of the game and tell you what's coming up uh, during the early access period. Thank you so much to everybody who has uh, bought the game and um, left comments and reviews so far. It makes a massive difference. So uh, without further ado, grab your sword, grab your sandals, and let's jump into the game. All right, here we go. Welcome, welcome to Swords and Sandals Immortals. What we see here are our two, uh, you know, the player and the antagonist, also known as the Starbound Gladiator, who are uh, the big baddie for the game. Let's jump right in. You got a bunch of options there. Notice how multiplayer is grayed out. Multiplayer is coming. Uh, we, right now we have a, a lobby system, we have a chat. You can actually get into a battle and this players can start to communicate, but I think it's probably about maybe three to four months away from launching. But uh, stay tuned for early access, that will be part of it. Uh, you've all got your game settings here, a bunch of different options. Uh, you know, you turn off the blood and everything for the little ones. Uh, different language options as well. Not all the languages are fully translated yet. And I'm hoping to bring in Chinese and um, German and uh, other languages. English, Spanish, Polish, French at the moment. And still a work in progress. But yeah, tons of options. You can turn the music up, down if you just want sound effects. Or if you want, you know, UI to be up and down, that kind of thing. You play with that. You go crazy. Okay. New campaign. Little note on the game. That's what's coming. So take a bit of time to read that when you um, get the game yourself. Hopefully you get the game yourself. Hopefully I can convince you with this live stream. All right. Notice Swords and Sandals 6. Uh, for those who know Swords and Sandals, there have been five official sequels before this, plus a bunch of spin-offs. You don't need to have played any of them. But if you have played them, this picks up where Swords and Sandals 3 leaves off. So the... <laughs> The hero from Swords and Sandals 3 returns as the bad guy in Swords and Sandals 6. It's weird. There's a little sort of Final Fantasy style naming conventions all over the place. Um, but yeah, this little um, preamble just tells us that he went off into space, was corrupted by a, a demon, and he's come back and he's hell bent on destroying the world, <laughs> as you do. And we've got 300 days to stop him. All right, let's create a character. Let's go here now. We have humans. We come in all various shapes and sizes. Um, you see here you have bonuses and uh, the ones in red are negative traits. You know, 5% penalty to defense when fighting underground. Um, but they have a bonus, 10% chance to hit when fighting in the hills, that kind of thing. Gunterians are the frozen people of the north. Elder Hathians are, you know, tall Egyptian-like people. Not only human types, you've got the sort of pigmen equivalent of the orc type characters. We even have Glamazons, mighty uh, seven foot tall warrior women from Elisha, the land of Elisha. We have the undead, the friendly undead. Well, not so friendly, but you know, <laughs> they have their own uh, inscrutable reasons for taking part in the uh, the great tournament. And the Yeren, huge beast. There's a bunch of other options. You've got to these um, Sagan blobs, which are actually voiced by my uh, children. Charlie and Isaac did the voice of the Sagan blobs. They're pretty cute. Okay, um, but you know, for today, uh, oh yeah, and the evil hexapods, which you know, take a look yourself. More uh, species are coming, including um, lizard men, um, baboon men, and of course, automatons, which are sort of alien robots with their own strange tech trees. But we're going to be human right now. You can have different sort of subspecies as well, or different homelands essentially. Uh, tells you a little bit about them will be from Fatal, which is, of course, the uh, capital of Brandor, the continent where the game is set. That's kind of a He-Man haircut. Lots of options to choose from. Um, some cool sort of Viking ones. You can have sort of... Um, what do you think, guys? Let's, let's go with this shaggy mop that we first started with. Same with beards. Actually, I quite... Like, let's give him a handlebar. It's kind of fun. And we will give him angry red hair. You can change the gender, you can also randomize the whole character, even change the skin color, all just cosmetic changes. There you go. And he will be Oliver the Unready. 
because <laughs> this is launch day and uh you know you're never truly ready for a game launch there's always something that can go wrong all right uh we'll leave those taunt quotes right and i can't be defeated okay you can increase the height or decrease the height and that affects your parry and dodge chances we go with a 6-6 six, six, uh michael jordan height and we might make him about yeah so when you increase or decrease the weight the body shape changes i'm hoping to bring in a skinnier body shape at some point as well for the extremes but the more you increase the height um and the weight you can see that the health goes up and down also available different voice sets ooh. Ah, ooh. Uh, made by uh myself and friends and also some famous youtubers like uh jerome asf um cutie critical as in charlie white critical there he is and he yeah uh, he actually has a little role in the game which i'll look forward to showing you master rath another great youtuber um We'll, we'll go with Ollie because it's me, right? You can also up and down. You can also go with a classic one somewhere. Let's go with a classic, right? Who doesn't love a classic? Okay. Uh, character classes. Six to choose from right now with more coming. We're going to go with additional warrior. You could be a wizard or even a priest, you know, with healing and so on. These will have more uh, class skills as well. Beautiful art from uh, my artist, Bokimi. Just a big shout out to that guy, without whose art, uh, this would not have been possible. And the music, music, phenomenal. Uh, done by Tekel Akagia and another composer, Electro, who's just done some fantastic synth tracks. And, you know, it, I, in, you know, technically I'm a solo developer because I work for myself, but, you know, working with these people, uh, contracting them has just made the game so much more than I could have done as an individual so I'm really honored to have their talents on board we're at the primary stat screen now you can adjust your character we're gonna have a you know a typical archetype warrior right now we're gonna go with these maybe put a bit of intellect points in actually we'll go with one intellect point because I'd like to have a bit of a, was a warrior wizard hybrid that would be kind of cool so when the game starts here we are in the small hamlet of Willard Sound. There's a little introduction text uh, text there, and then you can say, basically, do I want to be good or do I want to be evil? Uh, alignment comes into the game uh, a little bit later, not right now in the build that we're playing right now, but there will be ways to sort of spare and slay your enemies and sort of get uh, evil and good powers and that kind of thing. Now, healing potions we can get, stars or gold. These are useful when you get to a boss fight, but we're going to go for a star right now just to um, get our first extra skill. All right, we're in Willard Sound. It tells you a little bit about it. <laughs> the town's attractors quip that Willards may sound all right, but it sure smells terrible. <laughs> Drum roll, please. If you've not yet defeated the regional champion, have you not gone on an adventure yet? So when we first arrive, we get this uh, 300 days. That's the premise of the game. The game loop goes over 300 days. You have 300 days to become as powerful as you can and try and become the great sentinel as this automaton robot explains. I'm going to skip through this text so you can read it when you um, play the game yourself. But he basically says, we're honored that you will join us. You have 300 days to become the great sentinel, become the greatest gladiator, and then fight the mighty starbound gladiator. Our first opponent is this uh, useless rogue called Bruce. Bruce the Useless. And he has, uh, he's got dual wielding which he doesn't even have two weapons. Uh, night battle, no bonuses. We have an advantage playing in the hills. Normal weather, no temperature bonuses either. And you can see our stats are actually a lot higher than his, who has one for everything. Although he's six to 200 pounds, not too bad. If you're in um, uh, Imperial country, you can have pounds. If you're in a metric country, you can switch that to centimeters as well. Even though I'm in Australia, we have a bit of a mix. All right. Roll 11 or higher to attack first on the D20 dice. Pro tip, you can't lose this battle. <laughs> I've, I've kind of rigged it so no matter what you do, you're going to hit him. If you've played Swords and Sandals before, you're going to see this and see, oh, that's familiar. Your power attack, medium attack, and quick attack. In an early build of the game, we'll just do a quick medium attack first. 12 physical damage, his health is down to 4. But we had attack the head, torso, legs, and arms, that kind of thing. I took those out because they were very exploitable and they have become special skills you can get later. You can also jump, we'll jump back. You can walk forward and back. Notice these little numbers there, 27, 6 and 6. They affect 
how much essence this blue bar uh, is used. When it gets to zero, you rest and you're very vulnerable to take a hit when you're resting. You can use an item, we don't have any right now, or we have um, no skills either. Uh, oh yeah, why can't we use this? We're too far away, okay. We'll, get a, we'll jump towards him. He's gonna try and attack us. He's gonna miss because he's Bruce useless. Let's use a warrior strike. Broke his pants. I'm gonna explain armor to you in the next battle. For now, we've got 53 gold and 10 XP. We're gonna star as well. And we've leveled up. Defeated the first opponent. Well done, everybody. But <laughs> even say he was pretty useless. Meditate on what you've learned. Now we go to the campfire. All our other options, like the tavern keeper, the weapon smith, the enchanter, and so on, they're all locked off for now, as is the path to the overworld. But they will all be unlocked in time. You can see up here, it's 10 p.m. on the first day, 300 days until arrival. We got stars, gold. That little uh, crest there with 98 is our power score. And that sort of represents how much power we have in the game. Before I go camping as well, um, that halo represents our alignment. Let's just check out this. Here are our equipment. We have noob shorts with armor of eight, a noob loincloth, and a, a shank. Um, swords do extra damage against flesh. You can see, you can also like view them in that little window if that's a little easier for you when you have a lot of items. Uh, you can also unequip your items quite easily just by unequip that, unequip that. No pants! Get those pants back on. It's the most unbecoming of a gladiator. You can also check their vital stats here. All sorts of information about your character if you want to find out and just really fine tune them. Um, you can also check out skills. You can sort of customize your battle bar there just by moving things in and out. If you decide you want to yield the fight, you've even got a yield fight button if you want to give up a fight. I've left that off because people were accidentally were pressing it in the demo. Okay, talents as well. Five trees uh, right now. And this is what you start with. Survival, theatrics, warfare, and arcane. We're going to find out more about those in a second. Plus two trees yet to come. Plus your game settings. But for now, let's go to the campfire and level up. You're now a level two gladiator. Congratulations. So we will intellect and I think attack. What are you going for? We'll choose one of these trees. Those other trees will come uh, later on. For now, I think we should go with, what do you reckon? It is swords and sandals, sword mastery. Axes are kind of fun though. They give extra critical damage. So we're gonna go with a point of axe mastery. 299 days so that's our first day in the arena and then we meet this handsome fellow um, who uh, bears a more than passing resemblance to the great Inigo Montoya this guy's name is Guillaume de Langeville and he uh, is a weaponsmith and he just basically says hey come and join you and I'll sell you weapons on the cheap not actually that cheap but he's the first caravan to arrive and others will follow and these guys will come with you from town to town let's go visit him Okay, so we're gonna buy something. You have a cleaver, a blackjack, or a dagger. Every three days or so, you get access to new weapons and armor and so on. And as you get higher level, you start getting random loot. It's the Diablo style, you know, King's Axe of the Bear, that kind of thing. So look out for it. So we've got ourselves a cleaver now. And we're gonna jump into the fight selector. All right, here we are at the fight selector. Now this is sort of your standard arena screen. Arenas are an interesting thing. The build you'll probably play in about a week's time will have a special arena rules section because each arena will have its own unique rules. Uh, there might be things like spiked pits or pendulum swinging or even like no magic or no axes or defeat your enemy in 30 turns or less or even like tag team two verse one. I ran out of time to get that into this first early access build but I'll be adding that in as we go along. Okay, down here you see the power score of your enemies. We've got to win far, four more battles to fight the regional champion there. The power score, of course, represents the strength of our enemies. Should we fight this undead fellow called Haunt Crush? McQueen is the most powerful there. Um, then the Glamazon Ag, Ag Queen, you cult the Hexapod, and then Haunt Crush. I love the sounds. All right, Haunt Crush it is. Undead Priest. 
Okay, so as usual, we need to roll the dice, see who goes first. Hey, he's going first. If you are a rogue, you get a bonus to your dice as well. All right, let's try a warrior strike. Ooh, big critical hit, nearly one hit him. Warrior is an easy build early on. It gets a lot harder though. And you can kind of consider this first sort of town of Willow Sound a bit of a tutorial area while you um, just figure out the game. I want to show you something as well. This little spirit meter here. This bar has gone purple. His is still white. As you fight better or worse, as you, you know, as you have your attacks defended, as they miss, as you take more damage, your meter goes down. And then when it reaches zero, you get stressed and then you're, you break and you get negative status effects. Conversely, when you um, reach the full spirit meter, you get um, things like battle rage and, you know, cool status effects which uh, make your gladiator even more powerful. So watch what happens. Okay, he yielded before I got a chance to do anything. But yeah, that will uh, come into play in longer battles. And certain classes have ways to sort of mitigate that. If you've ever played Darkest Dungeon, it, it, it sort of took a lot of inspiration with the spirit and stress meters from that. Okay, we can go back to the weaponsmith, but I don't think he's got any new weapons for us as we're still level 2. We will level up grab ourselves some more points in I think vitality is important let's get ourselves a bit of agility as well so we can move a bit faster can't have everything but there are ways to increase um, skill points and so on and um, primary statistics uh, through adventures and that kind of thing as well axe mastery let's get a point in arcane let's get a pyromancer ability because I want damage done by a fire attacks increased by 10% because I would like to have this warrior wizard hybrid Okay. Good morning, I'm the training dummy. All right, this uh, fellow here, this sort of uh, hard luck character is um, the training dummy. And he, very important, you remember this guy and go back to him as often as you can. Because see these stars up there? You can spend them. You can do the Simulcrum thing is coming soon. That'll be basically allow you to fight arena champions as sort of holograms, like two-pack style holograms. You can train against that guy and just test out some of your moves. For now, we can learn skills. I'm gonna, they're, they're all here. This is just the first ones available, but I'm divide them up into Warfare, Arcane, Survival, Theatrics. Gassy as the wind. Who did this? What a, what a highbrow game we have here. Should we get that skill? Um, no, I don't think we should. Let's get ourselves a Firebolt. I think that's an important skill to have. That gives us orbs of fire that cause 31 damage and immolate your enemy. We can try the gaseous wind another time. <laughs> okay, so more gladiators have arrived today. Every day, new gladiators arrive. We only need three more battles to challenge the regional champion. You can only have about up to four fights in a day before it ticks over to nighttime. We're going to try a gladiator. We're 154 power score. We'll try Rathrock here. Well, let's try someone a bit tougher, Anaya, who has uh, a bit more armor. The human knight. Okay, roll first, he's going first. He's only brought a... Sh oh, he's, gonna, he's got a dagger, that's cool. You can also see their stats at a glance here and what talents and so on. He's got defensive techniques and he's a bit defensive, so it might be a bit of a hard battle. We can give him a kick with a This Is Brandle. It's a specific warrior skill. This is Brandle! All right, so we're going to use the Firebolt. He's immolated. Notice up here you have a uh, little status effect. Immolator cannot use special items when taking extra fire damage. So if he had a potion or something, he couldn't use that right now for the next few turns. No other skills are on cooldown. Warrior Strike are too far away to use. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we're gonna rest, get some health back. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so we got immolated again that turn. Then that disappears. We're gonna try a medium attack. Miss. This guy's a defensive. See, so you got stressed because you both missed. But we've broken his pants. He's frozen us, which means we can't use, we can't move or jump. Now they're red. Uh, your armor, I'm going to explain your armor as well now. Your armor represents, you know, this little bar up here, this gray shield. While you have armor, you're protected from really serious hits where you can lose a leg or an arm or worse, a head. You know, you can fight without an arm, you can fight without a leg or even two legs or two arms. If the head goes or you get your heart cut out, this happens in the game, it's all over for you. 
So there's a big chance of that happening if you... That's why I had to remove the attack arms, attack legs specifically, because um, there is a chance of people doing that all the time. So get those as special skills and you'll be better at hacking people's legs. It happens usually with power attacks. I'll try a power attack now. Ooh, actually, we're in danger of losing this battle. I think we need to get serious and use a warrior strike. Eight hit health left. Let's finish him off, finish him off with a fireball. Oh, no. We dodged that one. He's getting very stressed. Ooh. Ooh, is he going to get us? No, he rested. Closer to battle than I thought it was going to be. But still, I cannot be defeated. We have one more battle or two more battles? Two more battles. Okay, let's try Rathrock or Harley. Rathrock. Let's try for an easier fight. Again, Willard Sound is very much a tutorial town just to get you familiar with the controls and things before we introduce more complex mechanics. Ooh, we've been a bit unlucky with our dice rolls, haven't we? Oh, there we go. That's the... That's that loss of limb I was talking about. So now we've lost a leg. And when you have a, no, one leg, you move a lot slower. And, oh. <laughs> Supposedly, she was uh, equal, equally matched, but we have suffered our first defeat in the arena. Tragedy. <laughs> okay. You know, defeat does not mean death. Your day ends in defeat. You return to the campfire. Time is the important commodity here. We've lost a day now. 297 days may seem a lot, but it may not be enough. New gladiators arrive. Let's fight Fleet Blop. That voice is my little baby Charlie, who we recorded that when he was a year old. He's now... It was maybe yeah, nearly a year ago I recorded that. He's now nearly two, so <laughs> he's uh, speaking of words now. So... The good old Sagan blobs. Oh, he hit hard. These are big jelly creatures. <laughs> it's gonna sound so weird hearing their voice in the game, but it's a little tributary and I love them so much. And I just want them in the years to come to you know, feel like they're part of the games that I make, you know what I mean? Okay. What? <laughs> Lost two battles in a row. <laughs> This is crazy. What's going on? I need to fight some easier characters because I'm trying to show you guys a little bit more than this first town. <laughs> Stick with me. The tutorial town indeed. The one cool thing about the game, you know, if I may say so, let's get another skill. You're constantly learning. Um, this is a little training thing. You can try your skills at it. I need to um, actually make it so the training dummy is level upable. Didn't mean to click on that. I want to learn skill and we will let's get ourselves a barbarian storm so we can do more damage up close. That's a good warrior skill. I'm gonna get serious about this. Problem for us is the armor hasn't arrived yet until next turn. There's a huge Yaren and a Golem. Let's fight the Golem first because we're allegedly more powerful. I cannot lose three matches in a row while I'm doing the official live stream of the game. <laughs> This is for posterity. And we've lost another one in a row. I swear this is all just random. Okay. Let's try that um, Barbarian Shield. Whoa! That smashed him. He's lost one hit and he lost his shield. And he's got shield arm. That was... That's how you do it, my friends. Okay. So we're going to level up now. So we're now level four. And at level four... Um, we need another character. So let's get some points into... Do we need points into defense? I think intellect and defense because we are, you know, getting hit a lot. Another pyromancer skill. Hmm. Maybe it's too early to be doing this dual class type thing. Maybe you should have just been putting more points into warrior skill. But Okay, now Guillaume introduces you to old mate, Thargan, the armorer. If you remember Swords and Sandals too, those who can go right back to the early days of Swords and Sandals will remember this guy. He now has the uh, cybernetic implants, which will be explained during the story. Giant robot forge hammer. Um, and he's basically saying, you don't really impress me, but look, I'll come along because you need my help. And I'm doing it as a favor to Guillaume's father, Louis de Longeville, who was the weaponsmith from Swords and Sandals 1. A lot of lore in this game. 
So he sells us armor. You can see here the different kinds of armor. Helmet. Let's get ourselves some leggings. And we could afford some shoulder pads. I just want to show you one more thing. For those who are sticking around and enjoying the stream, I have a little treat for you, which I've only given out to a few people. Um, the first of the sort of Easter eggs in the game. Go to the Weaponsmith, type in enter code, and there's a bunch of these different codes. The one we're going to type in is this, Hat of Ham. Ready? Hat of Ham. Thank you. Check your inventory. Now, go and check our inventory. We now have the Hat of Ham. <laughs> Another little nod to the early Sword and Sandals games. The Hat of Ham gives us 10 armor and plus one to strength. Pretty weak little item, but a uh, it was the helmet of John the Butcher, the first arena champion from Swords and Sandals 2. So a little one for the fans. I've tried to pack in lots of little sort of Easter eggs for fans and things like that into the game. Um, <laughs> that's not a powerful helmet, but go right ahead and use it. Please be my guest. Let us fight Cut Shock. Cut Shock. This may be the last battle before the regional champion, I think. Yay, we got a win. All right, let's take it out on this guy with a barbarian storm. Oh, come on. We're, we've got better armor now as well, so we should, in theory, have less trouble. There we go. Really knocked this guy around for six, and he's getting stressed. Ain't no stress when you're dead. Or undead, as the case may be. Here we go. We now have... I'm just going to think. We should get ourselves some sandals because this is swords and sandals. It would be ridiculous to play swords and sandals and not be wearing sandals. We're now ready to fight the regional champion. We're at level four. I'm going to try. Charlie is our regional champion. For those who know Critical, Moist Critical, he of 10 million, maybe even more. Maybe, I don't even know how many subs he has these days. He's a big fan of Sword of Sandals. That's his voice. He lent his likeness and designed this arena champion for us. And fittingly, for those who know Critical, he has a vibrating purple hammer. He has a very unique sense of humor, dear friend Charlie. Rah, go out, stinky. Uh, so. A local entertainer who boasts of being the largest man in Brando despite his diminutive stature. He possesses luxuriant hair, a sharp tongue, a powerful set of lungs, and surprising vigor. Oh, so he tells the ladies, huh? Yeah? Let's have a look at his stats. This guy is a charisma build. Vitality and charisma. He's got a higher power score than us too, so... The main thing to worry about with um, Huge Charles is if he uses his taunt attacks. Oh. Oh, that was one of them. Luckily, we ignored it because I, my intellect is high, so I was able to ignore it. If that hits, it does a lot of damage. We're going to try a warrior strike. Oh, got lucky. He <laughs> just tried to gas his window. How dare you. Oh, I needed that one to hit the... Music by The Overthrown, a wonderful Swedish metal band who contributed this awesome kick-ass metal track to the game. I believe they might be releasing it as a single at some point. And hopefully it will be part of the Sword and Sound official soundtrack. Ooh, 40 on our... Yeah, that taunt. Okay, he's resting, so I should be able to smash him with 28 or 26. Barbarian Storm. Don't have any healing potions either. Should have chosen in the beginning. Oops. Dodging those taunts, thankfully. I'm going to rest, see if I get some help. Oh. I can risk here. Ooh, that was a good hit. Power Warrior Strike. What do you reckon, guys? Need this to hit. One more hit. One more hit. Don't yell. Oh, I'm going to get close to him. I'm going to try jump. Risky. Don't taunt. Okay. Quick attack will do it. You got it. All right. Huge challenge is down. Defeated the first of the arena champions. Just a regional champion, but a victory nonetheless. The arena champion has been defeated. And we get the fireworks. You gotta have fireworks when you win something like that, right? 
Uh, we are now champion of Willard Salon. You can have his vibrating small hammer if you wish. Extra 20% damage versus armor, bonus tonic. Um, we are specializing in axes, so I'm not going to bother with that. What I'm going to go is I'm going to take the gold and I'm going to take essence potion or stats. Let's take the stats. Okay, up to you what you decide to take. There's lots of options. Okay, look at you, a regional champion. He just is Stargan and I are moving on from this town. There's a world of adventure out there. And we're going to the town of Shackleford. Please join us for the next flights. And now, as you can see, the game opens up. So what we see here is, of course, um, ignore that black screen because I'm sort of jumping and cutting this uh, video as I go. What we see is a map of Brandor. And if I zoom right out, you can see just how big this continent is from the frozen wastes and from the north all the way across down to the Cache Desert special dungeons down there and adventures observatories right across to mysterious Eldor half and if this game does well enough I will be making more maps you can bet okay Willard Sound is our starting town level one town we can go to Shackleford it's four days ride four days walk we don't have a speed yet but that's coming there's a dungeon down there dungeons are not available yet but they will be coming here's a little pro tip for you though stick around in Willard Sound once you've finished it click on the adventure button this is a little fishing adventure where you basically uh, give a bit of advice to a fisherman's son or not let's give him advice and then uh, he says thank you have a healing potion two healing potions um, so that's a nice little one you can keep fighting in Willard Sound if you wish even though the champions be defeated if you just want a victory gold at some point you will um, be too high level to get any experience from them Every now and again, you will see little adventures on the map that pop up. There's one 17 days ride from here as well, but we'll keep an eye out for those. We're going to go... Let's... I'll show you what happens if you try to go to a dungeon first before we go into Shackleford. Double click on the dungeon, and here we go. Under construction. Not yet done. In the coming months, I'll be putting dungeons in. And what are dungeons? Dungeons are essentially going to be sort of... Um, if you like roguelike games like, um, you know, Tome of Magial and Adom and um, Stonebound Soup, oh, I forgot the name of that game, but, but classic roguelike games with maps and so on, this is going to be a really light version of one of those very simple roguelike elements. If you remember Swords and Sandals 5, a little bit simpler than that, but dungeon crawling and um, dungeon champions to fight, just to really mix up the, um, the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to Shackleford. There's another adventure here which we could go on. I won't read that story to you, but um, you got some intellect from that. So it's up to you. Um, read those. They're really fun stories. Uh, they were written by myself and another great guy uh, called Darcy Harris uh, here in Australia. And it is a phenomenal uh, a prodigy of writing, I think. And just really prodigious in his output. You know, I feel like he's a young Brandon Sanderson. Now we meet Persinet, who is Antares's. Uh, Emperor Antares' cousin, if you remember Sword and Sandals 2. Everyone's related, and she is the Enchanter. We're going to level up with our Hat of Ham. We're going to grab some Vitality and some Strength. Then we're going to another point Axe Mastery. We're going to head to the Enchanter, and I'll show you what she does. The Enchanter enchants right that's coming soon that will allow you to enchant your weapons with fire and um, ice and bring blueprints to her you can also reset your talents uh, if you weren't happy with putting points into axe mastery or fire mastery or something 15 stars will get it done that price goes up the closer you are to the end of the game and the higher level you are or the more times you do it so you know do it wisely you can also alchemize turn your stars into gold if you wish you get a lot of gold out of doing that but stars are also quite precious Let's, I'll show you what happens if you do two stars. We'll just two. There we go. Two into 284. You can also buy potions. Let's get ourselves a couple of healing potions. She sells blueprints and runes as well later on. And those are useful for enchanting and forging items. The armor, of course, can forge items for you soon. Not yet. And let's now go back to the training we're going to learn ourselves. Should we get Gaseous Wind just for fun? Yeah, let's do it. 
because we're immature. <laughs> what else can we charge? Oh, I'm one level off getting that. I'm going to save my stars for that. I'm going to pick that up real soon. So now we're in the next town. And as I was mentioning, these arena rules that will be coming to the game in the coming weeks uh, will be quite uh, varied. And so you're not just going to be seeing the same uh, battles you see right now, which, you know, as fun as they are, it's been nice to add a bit of variety. The first bit of variety you actually do see, this is the only one I've put into the game so far, but this is um, Shackleford is famous for having a big pit and you can actually kick people into it. So let's choose Justice. Justice with my uh, lovely moustache. My bad French accent. We're going to try our luck on Justice. So, if you roll a 20, you get an extra bonus star as well, which is fun. Watch this. This is Brando. Big kick. Now, hopefully he doesn't... Yeah, he's been stunned, so I'm going to leap over towards him. The more points you have in agility, the more you can leap. I'm going to try a power attack and keep knocking him that way. I'm going to keep pushing him that way. Okay. Uh, stop walking towards me. When's... One more school... I'll just try Gaseous Window. <laughs> oh, no, he could... Okay, look, what we'll do... Why can't we jump? Okay, we'll walk backwards. I'll show you the pit over here. Hmm. If I had a grapple skill, I could actually flip him around, but I'm going to try and jump over him. Now I'm going to try and kick him into the pit. Watch this. Ah, oh, low in essence. Playing a dangerous game, but he's foolishly walked towards the pit. And that may be your doom, Justice. Into the bin. Oh, I survived. You got about a, depending on your level of skill versus the character level versus the other guys, uh, 40 to 50 percent chance in general. Much, much, much lower if you're trying it on champions, because I don't want that to be exploited. So we'll rest. Try a power attack. And there we go. That's exactly the result I was after. <laughs> Very satisfying. And that is the end of Justice. So let's have a look at the fight selector. We have four more battles to fight the regional champion, but we don't have to stay there. If we feel like we want to go, at some point, you defeat two regional champions, you can go to the grand champion, which is this little button down here, which will, um, they're the big, big bad bosses, not the Star Bang Gladiator level, but there are 12 regional champions. Defeat them all, for the right to become the Star Bank Gladiator. But on this Overland map, there will be lots of more things arriving. See these little observatories here? You'll be able to visit those and fight um, automatons and even communicate with a Star Bank Gladiator and that kind of thing. Let's have a little adventure down here. 10 days ride. Double click on the map to center where you are. I'm kind of wasting time to get to these little adventures, but Okay, your peaceful stroll is suddenly interrupted by a rock slide. A merchant is also caught in the path of the mud and debris. Should we risk our life to save him or risk the merchant's life to save his goods? Do we say we're a good or evil? I can't remember. Let's let's do the evil thing. Yeah, we were rewarded for evil. You fashion a lasso from some rope and snag the merchant's pack. You pull hard, the pack is heavy. As you pull it out of the mud, you notice the pack was tied to the merchant himself. He thanks you for saving him and offers you some valuables. Ha! <laughs> Okay, well, it's a victory. Roast chicken, this is for dungeon use only. Dungeons aren't quite in the game yet, so we won't bother with that one. But let's get the essence chug. That's a good find. They're worth a lot. Actually, you get them both. Great. Um, I'll show you what happens if you go to a, a town that you're not ready to go to yet. That's Erengarth. Um, the Fortress of Chaos. But you're not level 16. You can go there when you're level 16. Um, if I go to... Let's go to Fator up here. It might be level ready to go there of course at some point you can get yourself horses and even sort of uh, warrior caps and so on to fly around the map you know uh, that'll make your journey much more um, efficient can't go there yet but we could go to Gallowstone's next level so we're gonna go back to Shackleford now and try our luck with a few more battles let's we'll see how we go before I wrap the video up We have 1,500 gold. Let's see if we have a new weapon available too. We get ourselves a guitar. 
you do that? Hmm. No, it's expensive and I don't really want to go down the path of the guitar uh, talents yet. Spend it on some armor. Cut purse buckler. Yeah, we go. Good shield. That's a good one. Shields are really good for um, protecting this game. And 86 stars. Great. So let's learn some more powerful skills. We're going to get ourselves charge. Oh, level 6. Okay, we can do that next level. We'll come back to that. To the fight selector. Let's fight this big Yaren. Okay. Get the new gaseous wing. Take that. <laughs> we didn't muck around. This could be the end of us. Oh, we survived. The Yaren are big and they hit hard. But they're not fire resistant, are they? Whoa. You know who also hits hard? This guy. <laughs> okay. So leveled up to level six now. Let's grab ourselves. Uh, where are we looking? A little bit of intellect. A little bit. Let's get some agility so we can get around this arena a bit quicker. You get enough agility, you can start leaping around, doing flips, all this kind of good stuff. Another pyromancy skill. Because that hmm. flame skills are good. Be careful though, if you specialize in one thing, sometimes you find there are enemies who are completely resistant to it, you know what I mean? So we're going to learn the charge skill. Actually, you know what I need to learn is this grapple. Get a grapple. This is a nice little trick I'll show you guys. Especially in this arena of pits. Get the shove. Is, which is very much like the this is Brandor skill that only warriors get. And we'll get ourselves that one. And I think we'll also get a Gale. Okay. So now I'm going to fight Graveslayer. Ooh. I think he needs to go in the bin. So, what should we can do with this? Assuming it's my turn, All right? So, kick him. He's stunned. Leap towards him. Give him a bit of a shove. See, there's that pit. Now, he should be close enough that I can maybe use a Gale. Gale kind of depends on your intellect, I think, how much. Oh, <laughs> he just burped at us and the lightning damage. So we can't use our special skills now that we're lightning. The next turn or two. Okay, yeah, still can't use him. And we're low on. So I shove them in. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah, there are ways to kind of uh, exploit this pit. And every different arena like that, we know with the spikes and the pendulum and all that different things, will have cool ways to sort of, you know, just defeat your enemy if you're clever. And that's going to be fun in multiplayer. When multiplayer finally comes, you will, um, you know, get a real sort of like uh, sense of who is strategic and who is just lucky. So we can... Ah, being a bit unlucky with my rolls there. Oh, that was the charge skill. Give it a kick. Stunned. Fireball. Gale. Yeah, so you're starting to see we're getting a little bit of power now with our oh, skills. Oh, we poison. Poison, you can't regain any health. Yeah, and that hurts. Oh, okay, there you go. She's got Battle Rage. Her spirit meter reached the full, and which means all her attacks do critical damage. Oh. Okay. She's 
serious. So that battle rage will eventually go down, but what have we got? I think you need to get in the pit. Yes, you are unwise to do that. <laughs> the odds might be a little too easy of knocking them in right now. I'm going to check that. This is what early access is all about. People will be going, it's too easy to do this or too hard to do that. And, you know, that's what we're going to do in this game. We're going to be tweaking it and improving it and adding different classes and skills and so on. It is a, it's a very much a living, breathing world. And I've, I've kind of spent the last 80 months getting it to this point to have, you know, your involvement now. And that's where I really want you guys to come in and, um, you know, help me shape this world. So I really hope it's, the game is popular. Let's see what weapons we've got now. It's still just the same ones. Every three days they restock, so I could rest. You can just rest anytime you want. So if we rest now, lose a day, but you know, you lose days when you're traveling, you know. Right? <sighs> we haven't met the tavern keeper yet who sells us noble steeds and so on. So we're going to see if there are any Ah, stout hatchet. There we go. Plus one to strength. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh. Ah, oh, level eight. Okay. I think we just need another win. That should be still there. That'll be there for a few days, so we can't afford it. One more enemy to defeat. Let's take Ufinus. <laughs> the uh, Glamazons have got great names. I use all these different random name generator um, things using prefixes and suffixes. And <laughs> some of the names that spit out are quite funny. Okay, Ufinusu. Take that. Okay, fine. You don't want to just use my skills, I'll just use my axe. Whoa. I need to defeat you. Ooh. What have we got? Take a fireball. There you go. <laughs> oh, not quite enough to level up. We can actually fight. Should we fight the second regional champion? Without getting that special hatchet? No, I think I'm gonna try getting one more fight in against this evil insect hexapod. Then if we level up, we can get that good axe and fight the second regional champion. Oh. Off with you. There, yeah, necrotic damage means all attacks do half damage, which is not ideal. And we're stressed out too. I need you to get in the pit. Squish the bug. Ah. Alright, use my pyro skills. Okay, oh, we're running out of mana. You know what? Let's use a potion. You can throw potions at people's heads as well. I forgot I had those potions. I probably should have saved them for the boss fight, but I just wanted to get rid of this guy. Before we survive. Charge is a good way to kind of um, close the gap between you and your enemy. Okay, there we go. <laughs> One more victory there will see us ready to go. And do we want any more armor? Any good armor? Brigand vest or blocky. I, I was gonna be careful because I need to save some money for. Can, you, can we afford that? Not yet. Brigand helmet. Let's replace our hat of ham as much as I like it. Get some brigand toga. Still need that one more battle, so let's fight Nad Esestra. There are a lot of Glamazons today. Lead with the uh, Barbarian Storm. Oh, yep, yeah. back you go. Into the pit. Whoa, 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 just survived. Okay. Knocked her into the pit, but there was a little visual bug there where she actually went a 
behind the pit for some reason. We're going to look at that. I've seen it happen once before, so yeah. Ex expect lots of um, patches and updates for this game because, um, you know, obviously I want it to be the best game it can be. Okay, so we can now level up. We're going to grab some intellect and attack. The thinking man's warrior. You put enough points into warfare, uh, you can dual wield items, you have two handed weapons, that kind of thing as well. We've decided we've kind of almost gone down the mage path a little bit. But what I want to do now, I'm going to trade in 20 of my stars. And hopefully that hatchet is still there. Yep, stout hatchet. And that improves our damage and gives us extra strength. You can see it's kind of a nice shade of gold. We're gonna buy ourselves a bunch of potions and some. Okay, then we're going to take on regional champion number two, whose name is Cutie the Jovial, and you'll see he's jovial because look, he's got a little bow tie, and that's a big shout out to uh, Cutie who. Uh, a great YouTuber who has also been a big supporter of Silver Sandals and very generously donated his uh, likeness and character to the game. He's got a, uh, a glowing fire weapon too, so watch out for that. Oh, okay. He's, he means business. been that strategic in this battle. I should have used some of my... You get away. I need to heal. And we'll use our essence thimble. So he is a defensive and vitality based boss. So not particularly good at attacking. So we're kind of lucky he's not, I don't think it's as tough as Mr. Charles level depending, but still not to be underestimated. Let's try and get him over to the cliff anyway, because there's a low chance of knocking him in. Get over to the cliff. How do you talk? Love that song. The Overthrown are awesome. Check them out on uh, their website if you like <laughs> Swedish metal. Which I should kind of do it. These guys are very talented. Oh. Defeat. And that, my friends, is uh, I think where we will leave today's uh, live stream, pre recorded live stream of the game. Ending in defeat at the bottom of a pit in uh, the forest town of Shackleford. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I've been making this game for about a year and a half and I still enjoy playing it as much as I uh, enjoyed making it. And, you know, it still surprises me. There is still a lot to come in this game. If you if you choose to get this game in early access, um, you're going to help me shape the game. Um, I will value your feedback. I want to improve the game and I really want to just, you know, as I said, make this the best Sword and Sandals game I can possibly make it. Multiplayer is coming, dungeons, observatories, extra classes, skills, species, you name it. Tons more arena champions and things. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, for those who get the game today or are watching and have bought the game, please review it. I really would love you to review the game. Uh, it makes a huge difference to developers if you review the game, especially if you review it positively. Give me a thumbs up. Um, please know that i value all your feedback and i listen to it uh, i'm one of those developers that you know I, I take everything on board and i do uh try to listen to what you guys have to say and um you know adapt the game to suit what the audience wants so as many reviews as uh, i can get will really help you know steam notice this game and, and and really spread the word about um the swords and sandals series so that is it for today my friends um until next time, I am, of course, Oliver Joyce. This has been Swords of Sandals and Immortals, and uh, I'll see you in the arena again real soon. Bye for now.